you want to learn how to set up Google Analytics on your website? So the process used to be a little bit more straightforward, but back in October of 2020, Google actually pushed out Google Analytics 4. So that's now actually the default property that gets created when you sign up for a new Google Analytics account. This is probably only going to look different to you if you have ever been inside of Google Analytics in the past. If you have not, then welcome to the new Google Analytics. So basically Google Analytics 4, it's great and all, but we also want to set up and connect the older version of Google Analytics as well. So it's that older version is still perfect for users looking to get the inside scoop on their website visitors and data and user experience metrics and all of that good stuff. So Google has actually mentioned that they suggest setting up both Google Analytics 4 and the Universal Analytics, which is like the older version, um, until Google Analytics 4 is fully developed. So you'll see the difference um, in your properties once we get started. The Google Analytics 4 is just numbers and then the Universal Analytics has UA next to it. You'll probably see that in the tutorial as we get started. But all of that probably sounds a little overwhelming at first, but I promise I make it a breeze in this tutorial. What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Mariah from MariahMagazine.com where I help you figure out DIY website tech and SEO. So today I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step the entire process of signing up for, setting up, and installing Google Analytics on your website. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is go to Google Analytics. So you can do that by going to analytics.google.com or you can go to Google, search Google Analytics, and it should be the very first option that comes up. Okay, so if you have never signed up for Google Analytics before, your screen will look a little bit different. It's going to ask you to sign into your Google account. Okay, so in order to sign up for Google Analytics, you have to um, you have to have a Gmail account. Okay, so this can either be like a Google for business or it can be just a regular free Gmail account. So you have to be signed up with an email from Google in order to use Google's tools. Okay, also keep in mind, like if you have a personal email and um, and a business email using Google, Figure out which one you want to be connected to Google Analytics. Like maybe if you're setting up Google Analytics on your business website, maybe just for organizational purposes, you want this um, analytics information to be connected to that email address. So just be mindful when you're signing into your Google account. Okay. So Basically, if you have already signed up for Google Analytics, you're going to be taken to this screen um, and I will show you how to, let me see, nope, not there. Um, you're going to click on admin in the bottom and then create account. If you were signing up for a brand new account, it's automatically going to take you to this screen so you don't have to worry about anything. So basically right in here, you put an account name. So go ahead and give your account a name. Just keep in mind that accounts can have more than one property. So a property is considered like a website or an app. So if you're gonna be tracking a few, you might want to keep this name generic. Okay, so it might be your name, your business name. Um, yeah, whatever, basically whatever you want. So I'm just gonna do a testing thing. So I know that this isn't real. <laughs> okay, so you're going to want you, I mean, like, yeah, account sharing settings, you can go ahead and leave all of these checked. And then property setup. 
So this is where we're gonna give the property a name. So specifically, what are we doing? Specifically, we are creating a property to measure the um, data on a website. So go ahead and give that a name. It would be whatever your website's name is. So if this was the first time I was creating one for Mariah Magazine, I would probably put Mariah Magazine website. Then you're going to want to choose your reporting time and then make sure that it's the right currency, especially if you have an e-commerce business, because in Google Analytics, you're going to be able to track like revenue conversions. So yeah, make sure that that is whatever it has to be. And then before you click next, click show advanced options. This is one of the most important parts. You're going to want to create a universal analytics property as well. Okay, so basically Google Analytics uh, created a new version. We're just going to call it G4. Well, that's what they're calling it, Google Analytics 4, G4. So it's basically a G4 property. What we're going to want to do is also set up a universal analytics property. This is like their air quotes, like old school Google Analytics. It's not old school. Um, it's a lot more developed than G4, and they actually recommend on their site that you set up both of them. So I'm not sure why they have this like hidden and advanced options. Very tricky. But oh. <laughs> this is actually where we're going to be. We're going to be looking at universal analytics property data, um, especially because they're still rolling out things for G4. There's still some bugs. There's still some some things that they need to do. And there's not as much information in there currently as there is within Universal Analytics. So that is why we have to create this too. So this is where you're going to go ahead and pop in your website URL. Make sure that you are choosing the right one. And then also if your website is www or not. And then you're going to want to make sure that create both. G4 and Universal Analytics property is checked. So go ahead and click next. Fill out the business information. I'm just doing a fake thing, so this is all kind of irrelevant to me. But um, you can check all of them that you want to. Lead generation, content uh, monetization, increased conversions, blah, blah, blah. And then click Create. So then you're going to get the terms of service, which we have to accept in order to set this up. And then go ahead and click. I think it said submit. OK, so after you do that, <clears throat> what's going to pop up is web stream details. So we're going to want to come down here to tagging instructions. And the first thing we're going to do is connect that universal analytics with our G4 analytics, because right now we are in our G4 analytics data stream information. Okay. So we actually, what Google analytics did because we toggled on that option is it created two different, it's kind of like two different properties. But it's basically like one's a G4 and then one's in like an old school universal analytics. So we have to connect them together so that we only have to put one code on our website and the data goes into both of them. OK, so what we're going to want to do is click use existing on page tag. Go ahead and drop down Google Analytics. So go ahead and duplicate this tab right here so that another Google Analytics tab stays open. So we want what we were just looking at to be open on one tab, and then we want it to duplicate and we want to see it over on another tab. So what we're going to want to do is open the Google Analytics property. So we're going to close out of web stream details, and we're going to click on this drop down up here. And you're going to see the account that we created and then the properties and apps. So you're going to notice the difference. There's a UA before one of them. We're going to want to click on that. So go ahead and click on that. And then we're going to want to click on all website data. So, yep, that is just going to load quick. Hopefully quicker than mine. 
Okay, then once we're on all website data, come down to admin in the bottom left hand corner. And we're going to want to click on tracking info and then tracking code. Okay, so before 2020, this was basically like the code that everybody would get when they signed up for Google Analytics. Since they're pushing up the the G4, or I guess it's called GA4, but whatever. So since they're pushing Google Analytics 4, this isn't the default like screen anymore, which is why we have to do these extra steps in order to connect them. So you're going to want to go down here and click connected site tags. It's going to open up a screen for you where it says connected tags. So we're going to want to go into the other tab and you're going to see connect this measurement ID and it should, I think that all of them are going to be starting with a G, but basically this should be the same thing that you see right here. So go ahead and click the copy button and then go ahead and paste that right in there and then you can give it a nickname. So blah -de blah -de blah You can call it Universal Analytics, you can call it UA, you can call it whatever your heart desires. So go ahead and click Connect. And then you should see it pop down there. So then we're going to want to go back to the other tab where it's the Web Stream Details. Okay, so then we're going to click add new on page tag. So basically what we just did is we connected the new Google Analytics 4 to the old Universal Analytics, but we haven't connected anything to our website yet. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now because, well, connecting those two together isn't doing you any good if you don't connect it to your website. So click on global site tag and then click copy. And then this next step is going to be dependent on which website um, platform your site is on. So if you are on WordPress, there should be, I mean, there, there could be, all themes are created differently. So there might be a thing in like your theme settings that says like add a header script or something like that. You would go ahead and you would paste this code in like the head tag like in that box that it gives you if you can't find the add like a header script anywhere in your theme settings you can use this plugin right here so this is header and footer scripts i think this is a free plugin yeah it should be so yeah basically when you download this plugin it will allow you to paste and inject a code into the head of your website which is exactly what we want to do okay so yeah, you can go ahead and use this plugin. If you're using Shopify, you're gonna also need a plugin. If you don't want to dive into like the liquid files or your theme files, or if your theme doesn't have settings as well. So you can go ahead and use <clears throat> this app, XO insert code. After you install this, it should allow you to add and inject custom code in the heading section of your website. Squarespace, they make it pretty easy for y'all. So go to your Squarespace site, just pop down to settings, scroll a little bit to advanced, and then go ahead and click on code injection. So then uh, you are just going to paste this code right here in your site. I am not going to paste it because as you can see, I've already done it for a client. Um, but yeah, after you paste it, you're going to go ahead and click save and then everything should be working just fine for you. Okay. But what I do want to show you is how to double check that. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is if you're using Google Chrome, you can have like an incognito tab. So go ahead and view your website in an incognito tab. If you're using another browser, I'm honestly not familiar with them. So you would have to kind of see if they have an incognito setting or like a private setting or something like that. Um, 
But basically, go ahead and view the front end of your website, so aka not signed in. So for me, I would open up an incognito tab and I would view mariahmagazine.com or you know whichever website you just pasted the code on. And then you're going to want to come over to the Universal Analytics dashboard, so the second tag, the second tab that we opened up, and go ahead and click Home. And since you are currently viewing your website, we should be able to see like you're viewing and active users right now. If it's not showing up there, maybe click on real time overview. Also, maybe give it a few minutes, maybe clear the cache on your website. Maybe it just takes a second for the script to go ahead and to update. But you should see either the number one or however many people are on your site. But it should at least say one since you yourself are viewing your website in an incognito tab. Okay, so by setting up Google Analytics this way, we're, it's going to be easier for us to connect Google Analytics with Google Search Console. Okay, so if you're not sure what Google Search Console is or how to connect them or how to set that up, I definitely have a video on that. Um, I'll go ahead and leave the link to that below. But yeah, that should make the whole process of um, setting up Google Search Console a whole lot easier. So yeah, I hope that that was helpful. Definitely let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so that's it for today's tutorial. If you found this video helpful, make sure that you give it a really quick thumbs up for me and take a second to comment below and let me know how it went. Um, yeah, and if you're not a subscriber yet, then definitely hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss out on all of the DIY website tech and SEO videos I have coming your way. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon.